Welcome to my presentation on RLO MPC, Robust Learning Based Output Feedback MPC for Improving the Performance of Uncertain Systems and Iterative Tasks. My name is Lukas Bunke, and this is joint work with my colleague CC Joe and my supervisor, Professor Angela Schellig at the University of Toronto. Many robotic tasks are repetitive, and this includes an industrial robot executing the same steps in an assembly line or a mobile robot following the same path repetitively. While these approaches are repetitive, they also require high safety levels guaranteeing zero collisions. In our approach, we make use of the iterative nature and enable performance improvement from one iteration to the next iteration of the task by leveraging state, control input, and cost data collected in previous durations or executions. Furthermore, in real-world environments, we often cannot access the full state measurement and are only provided with noisy measurements. In this work, we explicitly deal with the case of noisy output feedback and still provide constraint satisfaction and stability guarantees. In our recent survey on safe robot learning, and working on our benchmarking suite, Safe Control Gym, we found that safe learning based control based on noisy measurements is still an open challenge. And towards this open challenge, our proposed controller enables performance improvement using noisy output feedback in simulation and in experiments. In our problem formulation, we consider an uncertain LTI system. The state is x, the control input is u, the output is y, and the process noise is w, and the measurement noise is v. We also consider polytopic state and input constraints, for example, to stop a robot from gliding with a wall, and to account for actuation limits. The process noise and measurement noise are both polytopic sets, such that the noise is bounded. We want to repetitively control a system to execute the same task. And this can be formulated as an iterative infinite horizon optimal control problem. The objective function for a civilization task at iteration, iteration j is shown here with a quadratic cost. However, the infinite horizon is computationally impossible. And in the next part, we will discuss which components are needed for a computationally feasible control. First, we will consider the case when the controller is constant from iteration to iteration. And we'll also consider the case where no noise is acting on our system and that we can measure the full state. Then, instead of the infinite horizon problem, we can solve a finite horizon problem using a model predictive controller or MPC in short. In MPC, the goal is to minimize an objective function over a finite number of steps, the horizon h. And the subscript with bar t describes the quantity predicted at time t. In our case, the objective function consists of the state cost, which assigns a cost to each state and associated control input. This objective is subject to our dynamics, which for example, describe the motion of the robot, and the state and input constraints of our system, the initial condition, and for stability, we also require a terminal cost function, which accounts for the finite horizon, and a terminal constraint set, which guarantees that a feasible solution at one time step implies a feasible solution at the next time step. The control input applied to the system is only the first control input from the sequence of optimal control inputs. Here it is u uh, subscript t bar t star. Then the optimization problem is solved again at the next time step. In most real-world applications, there's a mismatch between the nominal model of the MPC and the true model of the system. This can be characterized by process noise W. In this case, we must account for the noise to still achieve constraint satisfaction. One approach to deal with this is using a pre-stabilizing controller K. It guarantees that the error between a nominal noiseless state, here X bar, and the true state is bounded. And this is referred to as robust MPC. So how does our optimization problem change with respect to the MPC case? And in fact, it is quite similar. 
However, in robust MPC, the optimization is now a pretty nominal state. And also the constraint sets are reduced in size to account for the bounded error between the nominal and true state. And also depend on our stabilization um, gain, K, and the noise set, W. Then the nominal state staying inside the reduced constraints guarantees that the true state stays inside the true constraints. Finally, the control input now includes a stabilizing feedback term. Note that this computation could even be executed offline for efficient real-time experiments. It could be extended to an online optimization problem, problem using updated state measurements at the cost of additional constraints and computation. Now we also want to deal with measurement noise and the case of output feedback instead of state feedback. In order to still apply our robust MPC, we need an observer to estimate our state. In this work, we consider a Ruhlenberger observer. And combining this with our robust MPC yields a robust output feedback MPC. So how do we need to change the optimization problem for this case? For the robust output feedback MPC, we now have to account for the additional errors resulting from the measurement noise when shrinking our constraint set for the normal system. Further, our stabilizing feedback now considers the error between the state estimate and the normal state, since we do not have access to the true state anymore. So now we have built up a controller that can stabilize the desired uncertain LTI system. However, we're not leveraging the fact that we deal with repetitive tasks. In our proposed robust learning-based output feedback MPC, we use past iterations to determine a terminal cost function and terminal constraint set from data. This allows us to improve the performance of the controller over iterations. And we call this controller RLO MPC. Compared to the robust output feedback MPC, this only requires substituting our terminal cost for a learned cost to go, and to switch our terminal constraint set for a learned safe set. The idea of iterative learning based MPC is to include data from previous closed loop state and input trajectories in the optimization problem for future iterations. Using this additional information enables performance improvement by expanding the terminal set and finding lower cost closed loop trajectories. <coughs> So how do we determine the terminal set? Here we have an x1, x2 plot showing a trajectory that stabilizes to the origin, indicated by the star. And this makes use of the fact that a previous successful trajectory defines a control invariant set. And also due to the linearity of the system, the convex hull of the um, trajectory is also a control invariant set. And then the safe set is the convex hull of all the visited states. Now, the terminal cost is given by the cost to go from previous iterations. Here we show a x1 over the learned cost to go plot. Then we can assign a cost to go from each of our previously visited states. And going back from their origin, where the cost to go is equal to zero, we can determine the cost to go for each of the states. And this piecewise linear function assigns a cost to go to every state inside safe set and is used as a, as a terminal cost function. This information then captures the closed loop behavior of the controller, which can be leveraged by future iterations. Now using our initial terminal set and terminal cost function it allows the enlargement of the terminal constraint set in the next iteration. And the improvement of the terminal cost of iteration as it reaches lower values. Now we have all the ingredients for the proposed robust learning-based output feedback MPC. So what are the properties of the controller? In our paper, we show that our RLO MPC guarantees constraint satisfaction and stabilizes the system to a neighborhood around the origin. We also relax requirements from earlier work that needs the initial state to be the same at each iteration. And instead, we only require the initial state estimate to stay inside a compact set E0. This, in turn, leads to not necessarily non-increasing iteration costs anymore. 
And to still give guarantees on the performance improvement, we derived a non-increasing bound on the iteration cost. And this iteration cost uses a worst case cost from our initial state estimate safe set to the safe set and the learned cost to go. In simulation for an uncertain LTS system, we can show the performance of the controller. Here we have um, the total iteration cost shown on the left. And we can now have the iteration cost over 30 different iterations for one round of the controller. And running the controller for the first time, we see that there is an improvement initially, but then the improvement oscillates. And we can do this multiple times. And we see that there is still variation. And after doing this for 50 uh, independent runs, we see the variability of the iteration cost due to the varying initial state estimates. Now we can also plot our derived bound here red. And this shows that the upper bound monotonically decreases, such that the worst case performance is always bounded, but improves over time. Our controller can also safely control systems under uncertainty in experiments in the real world. And we identified an uncertain LTI system for a quad order for stabilization task where the states are position and velocity in x direction. Here we see an x1, x2 plot and our initial state estimation set E0, where all iterations start from. Then we can show the normal state of the system trajectory, and which is uh, converged to the origin. We also can plot the state estimation uh, trajectory, um, which is being close to the normal state. And finally, we can plot the true state tra trajectory. And for the first couple of steps, we can also plot the error sets. And we see that the true state stays inside these error sets, confirming the identified model and uncertainty sets. To conclude, the RLO MPC is an iterative approach that can efficiently handle repetitive tasks. It enables performance improvement, even using noisy output feedback. It handles varying initial state estimates, as long as they are inside a predefined compact set. And finally, the worst case duration cost is shown to be monotonically decreasing. <laughs>